Steve Balistrieri, April 14, 2019 at 5 a.m. Eastern Time. Good morning, here is your Sunday Patriots News 0414 and AFC East Notes. It is looking like it is going to be another soggy Boston Marathon this year, we'd like to wish all of the competitors the best of luck tomorrow. As we stated last week we have begun our draft profiles on players that we feel would fit the team, our first on tight ends can be seen here, and our follow-up post on possible wide receiver fits can be seen here, our draft profiles on defensive tackles is here, in case you missed it, our second mock draft 2.0 attempt at building the 2019 Patriots roster is in the books. You can recap it here, I believe we all expect the Patriots to be very active in this one, possibly packing some picks for a trade or perhaps moving around the board as they are very used to doing. Mock Draft 3.0 will be coming out early this week. Derek Havens and I have been doing a special podcast highlighting the upcoming NFL Draft in addition to the regular one we do with host Russ Goldman. This week, we're planning on having ESPN NFL insider Field Yates with us to discuss the draft, what the Patriots may do, especially in the early rounds and about the NFL in general. Please do check that out around midweek. Last week did a draft mailbag podcast which can be listened to here. Quick hitters, Tom Brady was on his Instagram account beginning his off-season work at his home. The interesting thing about that was he was still picking confetti from the Super Bowl out of his helmet. Speaking of which, he can no longer wear his old one and must wear the newer version which he tried a few times last year. Chris Hogan signed a one-year deal with the Panthers. Hogan had quite a few memorable moments and catches in his three years in New England, helping the team get to three Super Bowls and winning two. But his leaving this spring is not a surprise, it seemed like a long shot for him to return. Pet Chung has signed a one-year extension according to NFL.com, locking up the Patriots' safety through the 2021 season. Ian Rapoport was the first to report the news. Chung broke his arm in the Super Bowl, but is expected to be fully healthy by training camp. Tim Tebow was in Paducah playing the Paw Sox for the Mets minor league affiliate and was asked about his brief time with Tom Brady. Tebow gave a long answer, gushing over the qualities of Brady as both a QB and a teammate, then apologizing for giving an answer that was too long. Tebow was and is always a class act. Rip Forrest Gregg the longtime Packer great offensive lineman who passed away at age 85 this week. Gregg set a record, since broken, of playing in 188 straight games and later became the head coach of the Cincinnati Bengals, Cleveland Browns, and Green Bay Packers. Vince Lombardi called Gregg, the greatest player I ever coached. The Patriots were supposedly interested in making a trade for NY Giants wide receiver Sterling Shepard, but for the second year in a row, the Giants when they found out there was interest in their player, OBJ last year, gave the player a fat extension. In Shepard's case a four-year, $41 million dollar extension. Safarian Jenkins is excited to play in New England, with the signing of Tay Austin Safarian Jenkins this week, it was a move we immediately pegged as a win but then turned around and stated that he probably would not be a and we'll double down on that. The move was for the veterans minimum salary with just a $50,000 signing bonus and incentive bonuses totaling only another $40,000. That is peanuts, so the outlay of cash and risk for the team is very minimal. Safarian Jenkins could, could step into a. It will be interesting to see how he works out with the team in the spring. And he can stay healthy and on the field. A best case scenario for the team would be for them to get one of the top TEs in the draft, which is still a big need, and have Safarian Jenkins step into the. Jenkins took to social media posting a picture of the original Pat the Patriot, he immediately got high marks from here, and thanked the Patriots and stated, I am ready to go to work. And why wouldn't he be? Look at the QBs he's played with and he's never been on a playoff team. Belichick praises Casario, scouting department. The head of the draft Bill Belichick held a pre-draft press conference at Gillette on Weds. 
and opened with nearly a seven-minute statement praising the work of Nick Casario, the Pats' director of player personnel. With a big turnover in the coaching staff, Belichick said that there was less scouting of college prospects by the coaching staff than in previous years. But he raved about the job that Casario and the director of college scouting Monty Asenford and pro player scouting Dave Ziegler have done. With the absence of so many coaches, Ziegler and his staff jumped in to help with the process. So it gives us a tremendous opportunity for him to connect with the coaches and understand the schematics of what's going on with the coaching side of it, and to try to integrate and correlate the players we're evaluating on all different levels. Belichick said of Casario. Belichick added that the goal, as always is to come away, as good a predictor as possible as to how the player will fit in and perform on our team, and in our system, emphasis mine, in New England regardless of what the league value is for the player. It's really what the player can do for us is what the final evaluation goal we're trying to achieve. Patriots and Titans will hold joint practices this summer, the Patriots always try to conduct joint practices during training camp and this season will be no exception. Prior to their Week 2 preseason game against the Tennessee Titans, the two teams will conduct joint practices against one another at the Titans facility. Sure, we are going to practice against the Patriots, Frabeel said on Friday. They're going to come down here, and it'll be great for our fans to come out here and see a lot of great players, the team that won the Super Bowl last year. And they'll be able to watch those practices, and see our work and see how we compete against each other and try to improve. That immediately set off a lot of good-natured trash-talking between old friends and former Patriot Logan Ryan, Devin McCourty, and Pat Chung. Ryan said he was going to play one snap at WR to burn the McCourty twins. He tweeted, easy money, he getting old, which immediately got a response from Devin where he answered, which one? I guess it don't matter, I don't like you versus anyone. Chung jumped in with, I mean damn, let's do it, lol. The two teams will meet there in Nashville during the week of August 12th. If fans are looking for a nice vacation trip, Nashville is nice any time of the year. The Seattle Seahawks are expected to be trading back from the and depending upon how the board plays out, the Patriots with a plethora of draft picks could be in a prime position to move up if one of the tight ends they covet are there or perhaps one of the premier edge guys like Clell and Farrell. Seattle has only four picks in the upcoming draft, first, third, fourth, and fifth rounds, so creating a few more would seem to be the order of the day for Pete Carroll. According to the draft value chart, Seattle's picket So to give them adequate compensation, the Patriots could package their first-round picket. Of course, they won't be alone. Everyone knows that Seattle may be looking to trade back and that means the Seahawks brass will be looking for the best deal for them. That's what makes this time of year so interesting. Blank, speaking of the draft, I was talking about Boston College OL Chris Lindstrom to a high school coach that coached against him in school last week and he remembered how impressive the former Shepherd Hill OL was back then. He ran those tight formations, double wing, and watching them pull out and road grade through the defenses was impressive, he said. Back then he was about 270 pounds, and he was still one of the faster players on the field. You could tell he was going to a really special player. We say that because don't go to sleep on a player like Lindstrom. He played right tackle for the Eagles, but projects to be an interior OL at the next level. But he has the versatility to maybe do both. Eastbound and down AFC East notes, Bills looking for a big draft to upgrade offensive weapons, the Buffalo Bills were very active in free agency and signed six offensive linemen as well as two wide receivers during the early going of free agency. Don't expect the Bills to stop there. Buffalo has 10 picks in the upcoming draft and they have the flexibility to move around the draft to search for the weapons to surround second-year QB Josh Allen with the talent he needs to succeed. The Bills owe us a mess in 2018 and they signed three guards, two tackles and one excellent center to help protect their franchise QB. 
They also added WR's John Brown, Cole Beasley and Tay Tyler Croft to the mix. But now they're poised to make some noise in the draft. With the Hawkinson and then adding Arizona State WR Nikhil Harry with their 40th pick. The Bills just had the other Iowa Tainoa Fanton for a visit. Offensive coordinator Brian Debel doesn't need to see Alabama Tayer of Smith up close for a visit, he coached him with the Tide. The Bills also signed F.A. Day, OLB Eli Harold this week. Harold played two seasons for the 49ers and last year with Detroit where he had eight tackles, four sacks and a pass deflected in 13 games for the Lions. Dolphins to pass on early QBs in the draft. Quite possible, the Miami Dolphins and new head coach Brian Flores have a lot of holes to fill in the 2019 roster. After the jettisoning of Ryan Tannehill and the signing of journeyman Ryan Fitzpatrick, most experts believe the Dolphins may reach early for the next potential franchise QB it. Not so fast, if someone they like is still around it. Fans may scream given Fitzpatrick's track record as a starter, but with Ryan Flores coming from a Belichick regime, they may be looking at the long-term best solution first rather than trying to fit a square peg in a round hole, which is how they ended up in this predicament. Jets Inc. Montgomery, may be the end of the line for Powell, the New York Jets signed RB, WR, KR Ty Montgomery this week to back up Le'Veon Bell. The former Ravens player was also reportedly being courted by the Miami Dolphins. A talented kick returner, Montgomery was cut by Green Bay after an ill-advised return at the end of a game with the Rams. Montgomery was told to take a knee and returned it out of the end zone and then fumbled. He was dealt to the Ravens where in six games he rushed for 83 yards on 15 carries, with no touchdowns. He also caught 10 passes for 65 yards. He began his career as a WR and switched to RB with the Packers. It is expected that head coach Adam Gase will try to find a niche role for him behind Bell. But that news is probably the end of Bilal Powell's time as a New York Jet. He suffered a neck injury last season but was thought to be able to continue his career fully. In his eight seasons with the Jets, the 30-year-old Powell rushed for 3,446 yards and 15 touchdowns, while catching 204 for 1,567 yards and 5 touchdowns. He was never the Jets. Blank, we've all seen those commercials, want to get away? When someone does something silly or just plain dumb. How about the editorial staff on SportsNot? This week they published a piece on NFL stars about to fade in 2019 and who leads off the list. Danny Amendola. Okay you say, that could happen, but what? Danny Amendola of the New England Patriots. This veteran receiver will likely see an uptick in targets next season now that Rob Gronkowski has retired. In no way does this mean the 33-year-old Amendola is going to be as efficient as we've seen in the past, ouch. Amendola hasn't been with the Patriots since 2017, having spent the 2018 season with Miami and now with Detroit. The facts checker took the day off it seems. Want to get away? Is it time for the draft yet? So, how was your week? Follow me on Twitter at stevebub7sfg or email me at email protected. Listen to our Patriots 4th and 2 podcasts on Blog Talk Radio as Russ Goldman, Derek Havens and myself from PatsFans.com discuss the latest Patriots news and game analysis.